What's up guys, Opie here. Welcome back to the Bruce City Garden. Hey, are you starting to notice powdery mildew popping up in your garden? I'm gonna show you the best way to stop that stuff in its tracks right now. Well, we're into the middle of August and it seems like uh, this is the time of the gardening season where I always start to develop powdery mildew. And it starts as just small white spots uh, actually on the undersides of the leaves. And that's why I think us gardeners tend to miss it um, before it really starts to take hold is because at least I know I'm guilty of it. I fail to check the undersides of my leaves, especially if I'm not dealing with other pests. I'm sure if I had squash bugs in here, I would be looking all the time. Uh, however, I, with the straw bales, I typically don't have squash bugs or other squash pests. And I just fail to check the undersides of my leaves Next thing I know, I've got white powdery spots developing all over the place. And I'd say, ah, dang it, I missed it again. So now it's just a matter of keeping this stuff under control. So what is powdery mildew anyway? Well, really, it's just a fungal disease uh, that develops on the leaves of normally your squash or your cucurbit family plants. But they can really affect a lot of plants in the garden, a lot of plants that you might not suspect. However, they're just more prevalent on your squash and cucurbits. Uh, and that's where I always start to see uh, it develop right around mid-August. And mid-August is when the temperatures are beginning to drop slightly, uh, but in especially the nighttime temperatures. You know, last few weeks, a couple weeks, our nighttime temperatures have been getting back down into the 60s. Uh, and the dew point is still very high. So high humidity, lower nighttime temperatures. It's a perfect breeding ground for powdery mildew. So now we know we have powdery mildew in the garden. What are we going to do about it? Well, the first thing we want to do is not panic. Um, powdery mildew is a very ugly disease and it spreads very quickly. However, I've never seen it actually destroy my plants to the point where production stops and the plant dies. It's just never happened to me. Um, but there are some preventative measures that we can take to slow it down as far as, far as stopping it. I, I don't think you can stop powdery mildew completely, but we can definitely um, slow it down. Now, the first thing I'll do is come in and just remove the most affected leaves. Uh, if the majority of that leaf has powdery mildew on it, I'm just going to go in. I'm going to snip it out. I'm going to put that leaf in the garbage. Don't put powdery mildew affected leaves in your compost pile because they will... Uh, they will survive in your compost pile and when you put that compost back in your garden You're just going to be putting that powdery mildew back in your garden So uh, anytime you're dealing with powdery mildew and you remove plant material put that in the garbage and get it out of here Also, do not uh, throw it in a burn pile I know some people they they've got burn piles and they just figure just throw the brush in there and let it go That can also spread the spores. So um, they uh, the majority of the spores can survive uh, in a bonfire or burn pile type situation and it's just going to throw them up in the air and spread them all over the place. So don't burn them either, just throw them in the trash. Now that we've removed the affected plant material out of the garden, uh, there's a couple of things that we can do to help mitigate uh, the spread of the powdery mildew. Uh, one is you can kind of open your plants up and that, that's going to happen when you remove the affected leaves. So, uh, you know, it's always good to go in and kind of prune out a couple of leaves just to, just to open the plant up and allow the airflow through the plant. Uh, now, when I do that, I even find limited success with that. So I typically move on, just directly move on to a spray of some sort. So now it's time to deploy the sprays. Now, there's a few different sprays that you can use, and all of them are going to have limited effect right so you could go to your big box store or your garden center and pick up a way overpriced spray um, that's probably going to work okay but not great but really i suggest using a home remedy type of spray it's going to be cheap and it's going to be just as effective as anything that you buy in the store now the first home remedy would be taking one tablespoon of baking soda adding it to a gallon of water you can add a drop or two of dish soap in there just to emulsify it a little bit shake it up and spray your plants with it and what that's going to do is change the ph uh, and it's going to not allow that powdery mildew to reproduce and in some cases will actually start to kill it off a little bit so if you get the ph out of the comfortable range for the powdery mildew um, that's actually quite effective for controlling it you can also spray with neem oil um, and that will kind of help keep the spores stuck to the leaf 
and it kind of coats the leaf a little bit and helps to stop the spread of the powdery mildew, especially when you're getting, um, say you get a constant light rain every day or a shower that passes through every day. And every time the rain hits those leaves, it's poof, it's sending those spores up uh, into the air and it's gonna land on the surrounding leaves and affect those. So a neem oil spray, um, although it's not gonna get rid of it, is somewhat effective at help keeping it at bay. Or of course you could add the neem oil to your uh, uh, baking soda spray as well, and that would be effective. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. Opie, I'm here for the best way to prevent powdery mildew. All right, the number one best way to prevent powdery mildew or stop it in its tracks, that's right, milk. Believe it or not, milk is probably the most effective way to stop powdery mildew in its tracks. And you know, it's funny, it works so well, but even scientists aren't quite sure why it works so well. Uh, they know that the enzymes in the cow's milk, and I'm not sure if this works with um, other animals' milk, so goat milk or whatever. If anybody can answer that, uh, leave it down in the comments below. But as far as I know, it's just cow's milk. Uh, but anyway, they say that the, there's enzymes in the milk that react with the sun to create an astringent effect, which will effectively scrub the powdery mildew off the leaf. So it's a really, really neat thing. And the fact that nobody knows exactly how it works, but it's so effective, I find somewhat fascinating. So, uh, you know, if anybody knows of any studies um, or anything like that, that can uh, discuss more about how it actually works, I would love to see that, but uh, just milk. and. I know what you're thinking. I don't want to waste the money. I don't want to waste milk on my garden. Well, you know, throughout the year, um, I don't know about you, but we've got several kids in the household. We go through a lot of milk, but a lot of milk goes bad. So my wife, my wonderful wife, has the forethought, if the milk goes bad, she'll just write sour on the carton and she'll, she'll send it down to my freezer in the basement. And this will sit there all year until I need it. I'll pull it out, let it thaw, and sour milk will work just as well as fresh milk. So uh, don't throw this stuff, don't dump it down the drain or whatever. Just throw it in a freezer bag, or if you got a big enough freezer, just throw that in there. Pull it out when you need it. So that's what we're doing. All right, guys, with all that being said, uh, let's go over and mix this stuff up. I'll show you how I mix it. As I mentioned before, um, nobody really knows exactly how the milk works to prevent the powdery mildew. So if you go and you look for um, the recipes online for this, you're gonna see a huge variation. And I have seen a mixture of um, one part milk to 10 parts water, all the way up to one part milk and one part water. So, you know, who knows exactly how, you know, what mixture is best. But what I'm gonna do for our purposes today it's just much, oh yeah, nice and lumpy. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. I'm just gonna mix two cups, which is about what I have here, just slightly over, two cups of milk. Ugh, get the ring out of there. Yummy. To, to uh, 10 cups of water. And just so you know, you can fit, um, there's 16 cups in a gallon, so. And I'm using a gallon sprayer. Four. Six. Eight. Ten cups of water. So again, I've got two cups of milk. Um, I'm using sour milk, which is fine, and 10 cups of water. And I wanna throw just a couple drops of dish soap in here, and then we'll mix it up real good. Now I'm using very little dish soap um, because I am spraying this during the daytime and I don't wanna burn my leaves. So just a couple of drops of dish soap just to help emulsify that milk and get it distributed throughout the water. We're gonna tighten this on, give it a good shake. 
And now we'll <laughs> pump this up, go out to the garden, and spray the affected leaves. Now it's just a matter of spraying the affected leaves. Just put a nice little coating on them. They don't have to be dripping, but of course you want to pay more attention to the leaves where you see the, um, the powdery mildew. Just get my nozzle straight here. A little bit wrong way. Now, when you're doing this, make sure you're also paying attention to the undersides of the leaves because that's where the powdery mildew is really going to start to develop. It's really as simple as that, guys. Nothing to it. All right, guys, so if you're having problems with powdery mildew in your garden, hey, give the milk spray a try. Let me know how it works out for you. Also, if you've got any other tried and true methods uh, for dealing with powdery mildew, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. Uh, anytime I can try something new in the garden to figure out what works best, um, I will absolutely take the opportunity. And if it works well, I'll absolutely share it with you guys as well. All right, guys. Hey, thanks again for joining me here today in the Bruce City Garden. As always, it's awesome to have you guys here. Hey, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. All right, guys, until next time, we'll see you.